Okay, now we're going to still use that inverse idea, but here they give us the theta, whoops, but they give us the, the theta of, they give us this, right? So I started that off poorly. This is still saying the sign, the inverse sign of a value is equal to a theta that I discussed in the last video. That's how it's going to be. It's just this time we have to figure out what the value is by finding the cotangent of pi fours. Well, cotangent of pi fours, remember cotangent is adjacent over opposite, and at pi fours, the cosine or the adjacent and the opposite are the same value. So cotangent of pi fours is just one. Well, then if we look at the unit circle, well, cosine is one there. Ah, sine is one right up there at pi halves. So, so the inverse sine of one, because remember, we're looking for the, the theta, sine is the height of one at pi halves. So right up here, you would just put pi halves. All right, let me cover that up. All right, so, well, here's something interesting. Remember, if we have, let's say we have sine of something, the theta is here, and the value is over here. Well, that's the situation we have. We have the cosecant of a theta will be equal to a value. So right in here, we have to figure out the theta. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, and here's just a little tip. On these, it'll probably be the unit circle um, ideas, uh, the unit circle value. So let's think about this. We know that at pi fourths, tangent cotangent is one, and we know that um, wherever sine is zero, remember tangent is opposite over adjacent, so tangent of zero is zero, tangent of pi halves, remember if we do one over zero, that's going to be undefined. So we have to either look at the 60 degrees or the 30 degrees. Okay, so at the 30 degrees, cosine is root three over two sine is one half. So if we did opposite over adjacent, so one half over root three over two, and then we multiply numerator and denominator by two over root three. Well, we're going to end up with a denominator. We're going to end up with root three over three. Well, that's not what we're looking for. So we know it's not 30 degrees. So my guess is that means it's 60 degrees or pi thirds. But just in case, let's check that out. So we have at 60 degrees, the adjacent is one half, the opposite is root three over two. Sorry about this, I'm gonna have to plug my device in so it doesn't go dim.
So now we just have to say opposite over adjacent. So root 3 uh, over 2 over 1 half. We're going to multiply top and bottom. There we go. So we now know that that theta right there, that this theta is pi thirds. So now we can say cosecant of pi thirds. Well, remember, uh, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. And remember, at pi thirds, on the unit circle, the hypotenuse is always 1, but at 60 degrees, that was root 3 over 2. All right, so we're going to put 1 over root 3 over 2. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2 over root 3. Whoops, 2 over root 3. So now we have cosecant of pi thirds is Let me do this so there's more room. So 1 over root 3 over 2, 2 over root 3. So 2 over root 3, then we're going to multiply top and bottom by root 3. So cosecant of pi thirds is 2 root 3 over 3. So you, you just have to you just have to think about what it is that we're looking for. So let me erase all this and kind of recap this stuff. When it says a trig function to the negative 1 value uh, the negative 1 exponent, and there's a, a value inside here, well, we're looking for the theta. But sometimes, as we saw in this example, inside we want that to be a value, but it might give you another trig function. Well, we still want the theta you just might have to figure out what that value is. Well, what I just drew, cosine of pi force is root, uh, root 2 over 2. Well, sine, the inverse sine, the theta at which sine is root 2 over 2 is pi force, but it's also at 3 pi force. But typically, you're going to see that as your answer. All right. That is it for this one, and I'm going to, all right, for the next video.